Okay, so I bought the new iPad. So on my channel, I'm always talking to you about don't go and buy the latest, greatest thing. Make sure you use what you've got. And I've just gone and bought the new M1 iPad Pro. But I'm here to explain the reasons why. In the studio here, you can see behind me, we've got the 27 inch iMac. It's a late 2013 model, the 3.5 gigahertz i7 with as much RAM as it can handle. Now that's fine to run the studio if someone wants to come in and record or use Logic, if someone wants me to do some editing of their music for them or even some mixing. But that iMac can only go as high as Catalina. It can't get Mac OS 11. But for me, that pretty much does everything I still need it to do. It's not dead yet. It runs Logic, it can do live streaming, it's fine. I've been running with a 2018 version of the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which is the third generation. It's a 256 gig model. And for most people, that is more than enough. And it has become my daily device. So for me, there are four major use cases for this iPad. And the first one is obviously music creation. Now I do live looping and I've done live looping on both apps and also hardware loopers, but I'm also using things like GarageBand, Cubasis, and now AUM. There's a continuity thing with GarageBand at the moment where if you have a GarageBand file on a Mac, for example, and you airdrop it over to an iOS device, you can't open it. The file and library system are created differently. Now this is also true if you wanna do things with logic, you can create a logic track and you can bounce it down for GarageBand for iOS, but then you can't change anything on it. The idea behind that is so you can record something in iOS and then bring it back to Logic. Now, a lot of people are hinting and hedging their bets of whether Apple are gonna bring out pro apps. But the fact remains, there are apps out there already that do an amazing job. Also things with AUV3 plugins, Ableton Link and Audio Share, you can do a ton of things on an iOS device already. So with the power of the M1 chip, this is only gonna make it easier. The second use case for me is this channel. Add to the fact that I run the entire YouTube channel on an iPad, that's also a lot of filming. That's right, for the past two years, I've been filming everything on my iPhone. So I had the iPhone 10, which is over there, and that still does the live streaming. And this is the iPhone 12 mini. Then once I've got that footage, I actually edit it on iPad. Every video you've seen for the past two years has been edited on that 2018 iPad using the app called LumaFusion. If you're not familiar with LumaFusion, it's pretty much the pro editor's choice on iPad for editing video. You can do six streams of 4K with six different audio channels as well. And the reason I started to use it was because I was using Final Cut. Then I put a 4K footage into the 2013 iMac and it was stuttering like mad. It took ages to render and my workflow just ground to a halt. So I started having a look around what was available and I was nearly buying a brand new Mac when someone else on YouTube actually showed me LumaFusion and that is Henny the Business. He is a pro man when it comes to the music game and also the editing game as well when it comes to filming. And he went on a journey with his YouTube channel to see what he could do completely 100% mobile. This really got me thinking, and at the time he had the same iPad as I had. So I thought, well, if he can do all his editing for his YouTube channel on his iPad, so can I. Now he uses digital SLRs. I took it one stage further and I'm just using iPhones. The great part of that is AirDrop. Once I've used Filmic Pro, which is the app I use to film on, I can then AirDrop the footage straight over to the iPad really quickly. There's no SD cards to worry about unless I'm using my GoPro or my 360 camera, which then I can plug straight in with a dongle. When Apple brought out the Files app and iPad OS, it really changed the game. So for me, my daily for music creation and for filming is both on my iPad. The third use case is actually drawing and design. Now for the YouTube channel, I create cards and you can see what the video is about. And for that, I use Procreate with the Apple Pencil. When I got this little baby with the other iPad, the 2018, I didn't realize how important it was. And for drawing and for creation, it's actually really good. But also for video editing, this is my mouse. It's actually a lot more accurate when you're scrubbing footage. I'm actually faster now on LumaFusion on the iPad than I am on Final Cut on a Mac. And the fourth use case is just every day to day stuff. Everything from watching Disney Plus and Netflix to emails and running the YouTube channel all through an iPad. Now I do this already. So therefore just with a faster processor and a really nice display, it's only gonna get better. Now last year in 2020, they brought out the 2020 iPad, which is the fourth gen one. And I nearly went for it, but I'm really glad I didn't because I've skipped the generation and gone to the M1. And the M1 chip compared to the A14X is a big jump. Also, if you get the one terabyte or two terabyte option, you get 16 gig of RAM and not eight. So I've got 16 gig of RAM. 
I'm thinking of now, but I'm also thinking two years down the line, I still want this machine to be fully capable. Now the M1 chip as it stands right now in May of 2021, is actually overkill. No one has said that the 2020 iPad is slow. A lot of people are hedging their bets and waiting for WWDC, but actually for me, LumaFusion already made an announcement to say they're doing multi-camming and editing off a hard drive. That was it, that was the winner for me. Now, if Apple then suddenly bring out pro apps, that's absolutely great and fine. I'll probably actually stick to LumaFusion. I like the workflow and the way it works and the new future updates that they're bringing out are miles ahead of everyone else. I'm running this YouTube channel on an iOS device. There are one or two little things that YouTube haven't implemented yet into the app, but you can just use Safari and go onto the desktop version, no problem. Now, everything I've talked about has been about speed. I've not even talked about the display yet, and I think that's what everyone's been harping on about with the 12.9 inch fifth generation, this XDR display. So at the moment, if I'm filming in 4K and I edit in 4K, I'm gonna see obviously a lot more clarity. But should I go up to that level, I've got more storage and I can do it faster on an iPad at the moment than I can on that. Now I'm not dissing my iMac, I still love it by the way, because when it came out in late 2013, it was the fastest thing on the planet and it's still pretty nippy. The other reason for the iPad as well is the transition over to Thunderbolt. I have an SSD card that's made by Crucial and it's USB-C, but I'm sure within the next year I'll be picking up some kind of Thunderbolt drive which will give me faster transfer speeds. Now the other thing about the iPad, and this is one where not everyone does this, but I actually do use the camera on the iPad. Now, I don't go out into the world and start filming with my iPad, that's not happening. But what I do is I use the camera almost like a B camera when I'm doing things like live performance. So you may have seen some of my videos where you get a down shot on the floor of say a couple of pedals. That's actually either an iPhone that's on a stand or it's an iPad that's on a stand. So I do actually use the cameras on the iPad. So to have an upgraded camera as well from the 2018 to the 2021, that's a big plus for me as well. So for a one man band filming production, I'm already doing it. And the M1 chip is just gonna make that faster for me, certainly when it comes to render times and then getting into color grading, which I need to get into. I haven't done that yet. Then of course the golden goose is logic. Now, if we hear that they're gonna drop pro apps, that's fantastic and that's gonna only be a good thing for everyone. Now, they've robbed a couple of things like Alchemy Synth and put it into GarageBand, but that's no way near as advanced as going into Alchemy Synth and changing things right down to the oscillators. So for now, I'm pretty happy with my purchase and I think it's only gonna get better if they change iPad OS. My workflow isn't gonna change that much. I'm still gonna be using LumaFusion, I'm still gonna be using Procreate to create my cards on YouTube. I'm still gonna be using Filmic Pro on both the iPhone and the iPad. And I'm gonna to start to get deeper into other apps like Cinemaker for live streaming and as other developers create more powerful apps to utilize this thing. So my question to you is, what are you using right now? You're using an iPhone, you're using an iPad, which iPad are you using? Or maybe you're a true Mac user, you're sticking it out to see what happens, whether they're gonna replace the 15 inch MacBook Pro or what's happening with the iMac. Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.